On our previous episode, we traveled to Annapolis, Maryland, where our dream of circumnavigating began to take shape. Join us and our friends on day two of the boat show as we continue to explore sailboats, attend lectures, and even take a trolley tour of Annapolis. What new discoveries are in store? Will you find an avenue to set sail sooner? Thanks for coming along. We are close to finishing. Skyler's never quit. So here we are on our way to day two of the Annapolis Spring Boat Show, Sailboat Show. And uh, we felt like we should give you a little bit of background of exactly why we're here. So, two years ago, it was our 10 year wedding anniversary and we went on a cruise. And on that cruise, we took an excursion on a speedboat through uh, St. Martin and fell in love with being on the water. So, we decided we want to go ahead and expand that lifestyle, explore it, and possibly do it full time. So here we are. We're looking to see if this is doable. Are you excited? I'm excited. <laughs> we have our lovely friends here supporting us. <laughs> and they're choosing the one that they want to come visit on. <laughs> Why are you impressed by the napkins? Okay. Good question, Eric. Um, the feel of the napkin, I wanted to invite you into the camera just to put your hands on this and to feel the napkin. It's 12 ply. Yeah. The well, waitress has just told us it's 12 ply napkin. Now, when you come to a restaurant that has 12 ply napkins, what do you think they do when it comes to the food? I'm just looking forward to find out. Celebration. So, my wife planned this whole trip and uh, surprised me with it. That's going to be surprising with the new boat. Don't record that. So, how's it, how do you feel being on a catamaran for the first time? It feels exhilarating. I mean, you already feel the wind in your hair, the, the sunshine on your face, and there's something about that just constant connection with nature. So we're on the Lucia 40, Fontaine Bougeau, and I will say that it has a very efficient use of space. And this is a 40, so you're giving up a lot of space, so your salon is a lot shorter, you don't have a lot of the um, forward use of space. However, it feels like a, a good sized boat. If we're going to be on this boat with teenagers, we're probably going to want to throw them overboard anyways. I don't know if seven feet is going to make a big difference. <laughs> I don't care about any charter, I don't care about anything, I just want tax benefits. And I say, no, you don't. The tax benefits are the beautiful cherry on top. Guys, how many of you go into an ice cream box and say, give me a bowl of cherry? We stopped to listen to a few lectures along the way. This one on boat as a business was interesting. It was fun, nonetheless, to debate scenarios to see if there was a way to set sail earlier than planned. However, we came to the conclusion that at this point, a bowl of cherries was not likely in our near future. So this is the boat that we started looking at almost two years ago. And the reason being that this was our first choice once we got the, the hook set for trying to buy a yacht of this, uh, and do this lifestyle was that Lagoon really was the first one to turn over their style and design at that time. So uh, two years ago, uh, they, most of the other manufacturers were still doing their older designs, but uh, 
But uh, since that, two years, three years ago, Count Dame Peugeot has come out with new lines, new, new design. Uh, Leopard has just come out with new designs in the past quarter of 2018. Uh, so we're uh, having a much higher, wider view now of the boats uh, to choose from. But this really was kind of the boat that kicked off that, that redesign session in the market. So this is a St. Francis catamaran. We have not heard of this manufacturer before. Uh, apparently they only produce uh, about one or two boats per year. This is all 23, and I believe you said the company's been around for 20 years. So uh, they do things a lot more by hand, a little bit less processed uh, furniture, wood, and all that fun stuff. Uh, it's highly customizable, so uh, it's a lot more great. I like that home station, the closure up top. We took a break from the boat show with a trolley tour through Discover Annapolis. We started at the Annapolis City Dock, past the Colonial Mansions, the Governor's Residence, Maryland State House, the World War II Memorial, and St. John's College. It was a great way to get the lay of the land and hear more about this historic city. This is our capital, but it wasn't always our capital. And how it became our capital is very important to its history. Now, the first capital of Maryland was located about 70 miles south of here, down towards our southern border with Virginia. It was called St. Mary City, and it was down there in 1634 when Maryland was started by the Calvert family. We are at the, just above the World War II Memorial, and there's a lookout portion, portion here that we should be able to look at onto an atlas. We finished up the tour and headed to Carroll's Creek Cafe for dinner. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Eric, happy birthday to you. Join us next episode for our final day at the Annapolis Sailboat Show, where we sail the Chesapeake Bay and explore the U.S. Naval Academy. And as always, we hope the wind fills your sails.